Hey everyone, welcome back for another video. What we're gonna be doing today is we'll be taking out a look at our week six college football matchups for all of our top 25 teams. We'll be breaking down every single game, trying to predict the outcome, but we'll be focusing mainly on the betting portion today. That's the money lines, the spreads, and the over-unders for every single one of our top 25 games for week six of the college football season. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Every week we go over all of the college football games, ranked and unranked games, and we also do the same thing for every NFL game as week. We do the predictions, we do the breakdowns, we do the best bets, the money lines, the spreads, and the over-unders. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed so you can follow along with us this year. We're taking a look at our week six college football matchups. The year is starting to fly by. We have a lot of good games because teams are getting deeper into conference play. The games are starting to mean more and they're getting a lot more complicated. Let's go ahead and start running through these. The very first one we have kicking things off. This is a Friday night game at 9 p.m. on Fox. Three and two Michigan State playing number six Oregon Ducks who are undefeated four and oh. The Ducks have a 92.4% chance to win this game. They are 23 point favorites here. The over under is 52 and a half. When you're looking at Michigan State, obviously Jonathan Smith did have to completely revamp this team. Their quarterback, five-star, but he's having a lot of turnovers, five touchdowns, eight picks so far. They need to control the turnover battle to have a chance in this game. They're averaging 21.8 a game, giving up 19. They have a solid defense. Oregon, they're getting a lot better since their first two games when they failed to get a lot of push on the offensive line. Dylan Gabriel was the Heisman front runner coming into this season. He has the playmakers. He has Johnson. He has Stewart. They're averaging 36 a game. They're giving up 18.8 a game. This is the top five overall roster, top 10 defense, top 10 offense. Look for them to continue to get better, continue to get push on the offensive line. I have Oregon winning this one 44 to 17, dominating this game, covering the spread, going with the over. They have to continue to get better every week because the Buckeyes are coming up soon and they want to be fully prepared to play them. The next matchup we're going to look at this is also a Friday game. This is. At 9 p.m. on Fox Sports 1, 3 and 1, Syracuse Orange. Do not sleep on the Orange this year. They're one of the highest rated passing teams in the country. They'll be playing new to the top 25, UNLV 4 and 0. UNLV has a 79.4%, sorry, a 79.2% chance to win this game. They are four and a half point favorites. The over-under is 58 and a half. When you're looking at Syracuse, their quarterback is Kyle McCord. He's throwing for 392.8 yards a game. They are lighting it up vertically through the air. They're averaging 33.8 per game. If UNLV does not bring their A game, this is a power four game, they're going to lose here at home, and Syracuse is giving up 22.5 per game. UNLV, they lose Sloka at the quarterback position, but Williams perfectly stepped in just fine. He's a mobile quarterback. He can run it. He can throw it. Right now, they're averaging 45.3 per game, 155 through the air, 283 on the ground. This team will be seeking to run the ball, suck up clock, keep the ball out of Kyle McCord's hands, and they're giving up 13.8. The biggest issue for Syracuse is Kyle McCord is throwing for a lot, almost 400 yards a game, but he also is having a lot of turnovers. This game is practically a 50-50 here. This is a close spread. I'm going to go with UNLV winning this one, 31-27, to not covering that spread, and I'm also going with the under as well there. Then the next matchup we're going to look at, we're moving on to our Saturday games at 10.30 p.m. on ESPN. This is the college game day game. It's going to be a late one. We have number eight Miami falling one spot after barely beating Virginia Tech. They are 5-0 undefeated. They're traveling all the way from the southeast, all the way to the west coast. Very odd, but that's now an ACC matchup. They'll be playing 3-1 and one Cal. Miami has a... What is their percent to win this game? They're coming in here with a 71.6% chance to win this game. They are 10-point favorites. The over-under here is 54 and a half. This game, so Miami had that letdown game versus Virginia Tech at home. They have a couple things that they need to work on, mainly on the secondary. Guys were running wide open the whole game. That's been an issue this whole season, but as they're getting deeper into conference play, you're playing better competition. So there's teams that are going to be able to exploit that. But Miami has the skill position players to be able to make up for that. Right now, they come in with the number eight overall roster, according to ESPN. They're averaging 49.4 per game. They're only giving up 15 points a game. They have a top 10 rush defense. They're throwing for 399.6. That's top five in the nation. 
They're running for 193. They have Ward, Martinez, Fletcher, Arroyo, Restrepo, George, Horton, Williams, a top 10 offensive line. They've only given up four sacks this whole season. They have a top 15 defense, a top 10 defensive line. They're getting Ruben Bain back. Do not sleep on Cal. Cal lost to Florida State, but they've beaten Auburn. They've had a really competitive season. They have a solid defense. They're averaging 23 a game. They're only giving up 12.8 points a game. There's going to be jet lag factor here. Cal can throw the ball. They can run the ball as well. Suck up clock. Keep the ball out of Miami's hands. How does Miami play here on the road across the country? Thankfully for Miami, Cam Ward has played in Cal before coming from the old Pac-12. I have Miami winning this one 38 to 16. I have them covering that spread, but I'll be going with the under here. Then the next matchup, we're looking at a Big Ten on Big Ten matchup on Fox at 12 p.m. 1 and 3, UCLA Bruins playing number 7 Penn State 4-0. They did move up one spot here. Penn State has a 95.3% chance to win this game. 27 and a half point favorites. I hate these massive spreads for in-conference games. The over-under here is 46 and a half. When you're looking at this matchup, UCLA Garbers is having an awful season at the quarterback position. They're having issues moving the ball every single game this season. They're only averaging 14.8. They are giving up 297.5 passing yards a game. They're giving up 107 rushing yards. And their defense overall is giving up 30.8 points per game and they have virtually no running game they're only averaging 57 yards per game on the ground that's pretty bad and they're playing a penn state team that right now is rolling they're getting into big 10 play they have a top 10 team they have a top 10 defense under tim allen they get after the quarterback they get a lot of pressure james franklin has a very talented team here they're averaging 36.3 per game they have drew waller they have one of the best one two running back punches in the country they're throwing for 254 they're running for 251. That's about as balanced as it can be in their new offensive scheme. And they're only giving up 11.5 points a game. That's a top 10 defense, only giving up 72 rushing yards. They're going to get a lot of pressure on the Bruins. But with Big Ten play getting deeper, they want to keep their starters healthy. There's no reason to play them four quarters. Look for them to pull them late in the third. I have Penn State winning this one 41 to 16, not covering that spread, but I'm going with the over. This next matchup's a tough one. I, I'm I'm not going to lie. I'm a 50-50 split here. I would not bet on this game at all. But at 12 p.m. on ABC, number 9, 4-0 undefeated Missouri, playing number 25, Texas A&M Aggies, 4-1. This is one of our top 25 on top 25 matchups. Right now, Missouri has a 51.7% chance to win this game. But it's the Aggies who are the favorite, two-and-a-half-point favorites. The overrunner is 48-and-a-half. I have... No faith in Missouri. I've said the whole season, this is not a top 10 team. I think any of these top 10 teams would beat Missouri. Even in Missouri, they're not a bad team by any means. They have an easy SEC schedule this season. They'll probably cruise to a 10-2 and two season very easily. They, had, they do have an outside shot to make the playoffs, but outside of Burden and Cook and Noel, they really don't have that many weapons. They're not a very deep roster. They're not one of the best teams in the SEC. They're probably the sixth or seventh best team in their own conference, but it is a very deep conference. Just to let you know how little faith people have in them, they are the number nine team and they're two and a half point favorites to the Aggies who are number 25. So a lot of people, they have that rank, but they don't trust them. But this is still a very good squad. Do not sleep on them. They average 36.5 a game. They're only giving up 12 points per game. They have a top 30 offense, top 30 defense. They're throwing for 270, running for 206. The Aggies under Elko, they're having to rebuild this roster. They did lose Connor Wegman. He is healthy. He is back. There's no point to take a read at the quarterback position. He's done a lot better than Connor Wegman. He is multiple. He can throw it. He can run it. They're averaging 29 per game, 170 passing, 232 on the ground. They're only giving up 18 points a game. They have the number six overall roster, according to ESPN. I flip flop back and forth on this game. Like I said, I don't want anything to do with this game. I could see it going either way. I have Missouri winning it 24 to 21. The spread not getting covered. I'm going with the under, but I will not be partaking of this game personally because it's very evenly matched. Talent-wise, player-wise, this one could go either way. 
And this next matchup is one of our under the radar good ones at 12 p.m. on ESPN 4 and 1 SMU. If they win this one, they will be ranked. This is ACC on ACC. They'll be playing number 22 Louisville at 3 and 1, who almost beat Notre Dame last week. They lost it, but it was a one possession loss. They made a close game out of it. Right now, Louisville has a 67.4% chance to win this game. They are seven point favorites here. The over under is 56 and a half. There's going to be some points to this game. Both of these teams can score, and I don't have full confidence of who's going to win it because they're both in very similar situations. So under Rhett Lashley, SMU, they were an 11 win team last season. They can move the ball. They have two quarterbacks, both of them capable of playing at a high level. They're averaging 42.2 points a game, 222 passing, 206 on the ground. They're only giving up 21.4. They have a very good run defense, but Louisville is not far behind. This is a talented team. This is a team looking to compete for the ACC title this season. They're averaging 41.5, throwing for 305.5, running for 178.5, and they're only giving up 16 points per game. So... I believe this game is going to come down to the final possession. It's going to be a close one. Both teams can score. It's Rhett Lashley versus Jeff Brom. This one could also go either way, but I'm going to go with Louisville having the ball last and winning this game 34 to 30, not covering the spread, but I'm going with the over. That next game is also a Big Ten on Big Ten at 3.30 p.m. on CBS. 3-1 and one Iowa Hawkeyes versus number three, the Ohio State Buckeyes at 4-0. This is the number three overall roster according to ESPN. They have a 89.7% chance to win this game. 20.5 point favorites here. The over-under is 44.5. Whenever you're playing the Hawkeyes, you always have to be cognizant of the spread because Iowa always has a top 10 defense, but they usually always have a top worst a, sorry, a top 10 worst offense. Right now, they're averaging 32 per game. That's all fine, but they cannot throw the ball in any way whatsoever. But they have one of the best running backs in the country. They're running for 250.3. Their running back is running downhill on everyone, but he's playing the Buckeyes now. The potential top 10, the top defense in all of college football, but I was only giving up 13.8 per game. And they're only giving up 62 yards on the ground. They're going to look to stack that line, shut down the Buckeyes run game, force them to have to beat them vertically through the air. But the Buckeyes are fully prepared for that. They average 48.8 points a game, 313 through the air, 228 on the ground, only giving up 6.8 points per game. They had the number three overall defense last season. They brought back eight starters and they added to their defensive squad. Knowles has a really good defense here. You also have Ryan Day. You have Chip Kelly. And on offense, you have Will Howard. You have Egbuka, Jeremiah Smith, Henderson, Quinchin Junkins, one of the better running one-two running back combos. If Iowa shuts down the run game, Will Howard can still throw it. I have the Buckeyes winning this one 33-13. I have them not covering that spread just barely, but I think that spread's going to come down by the time that we get to game time and I have them going over. Then we have some SEC play coming up at 3.30 p.m. on ABC 2 and 3 Auburn. Things are really looking bad right now for Hugh Freeze's squad. He needs to get things back on track. He has a good defense, but the offense has been sputtering for the last few weeks. They'll be playing number five Georgia Bulldogs 3-1, coming off with of a really close loss to Alabama. They also want to get things back on track. They want to right the ship. They definitely want to get their defense right. Right now, looking at Auburn, they're averaging 33.4 points a game. They're giving up 18.8. Defense isn't the problem, but Peyton Thorne at the quarterback position has been awful. They have the freshman there. Hugh Freeze has to decide what he wants to do going forward. But Georgia's defense is going to be pissed off that they gave up almost 40 points to Alabama. They're going to want to take that out on someone. That someone is going to be Auburn this week. Georgia's going to be pissed off. Kirby Smart is going to have this team rally in the wagons. They want to get back on track. They want to get back in the front place of the SEC. Georgia's averaging 32.3 points a game. They need to get the running game going. They've been able to vertically pass the ball. They're averaging 311 through the air, but only 129 on the ground. Georgia's usually a heavy, run-heavy team. They've gotten away from that this season. They need to get their offensive line solidified, open up some lanes for the run game. But their defense is is still great. They're only giving up 14.8. I have Georgia getting some revenge here on the victim Auburn, taking out the Bama loss on them. I have them winning this game 38-13, covering the spread, but going with the under. 
Then our next matchup is going to be a fun one at 3.30 p.m. on ESPN. Number 12, Ole Miss at 4-1 and one coming off of that loss this past weekend versus Kentucky. They like Georgia. They were top 10. They lost. They want to get things back on track. A lot of people saying that Ole Miss was overrated. They had an easy schedule. They played a tough team. They lost. While that is true, do not underestimate the talent on this team. They will be playing South Carolina, who has a habit of beating top 10 teams and surprising everyone. So a lot of people right now are actually calling for the upset, looking for the upset here. But Ole Miss has a 75.3% chance to win this game. They are nine-point favorites. The over-under is 53.5. As I mentioned, Ole Miss, they worked the portal hard. Lane Kiffin put all the chips in the portal. They brought in the number one transfer portal class. They have Jackson Dart. They have Parrish. They have Trey Harris. They want to get the offense back on track. The defense still played well last week. They averaged 47.4 per game, 401 through the air, 217 on the ground. They're still only giving up 8.4 points a game, 46.2 rushing yards per game. South Carolina, they can score. They're averaging 34.3. They're giving up 17. And like I said, they have a habit of upsetting top 10 teams. But I have Lane Kiffin being pissed off. They better not lose this game or they're going to catch a lot of heat. I have Ole Miss pulling it out 38-21. I have them covering the spread. I'm going with the over. Now back to some Big Ten on Big Ten play at 3.30 p.m. on the Big Ten Network. Undefeated 5-0 Indiana. They're number 23. Welcome to the top 25. They'll be playing 2-2 two two Northwestern. Right now, Indiana has a 84.8% chance to win this game. 14 point, point favorites here. The over-under is 41 and a half. Looking at these two teams, Indiana has come out of nowhere, but props for them. Signetti and this squad, they are lighting it up on offense and defense. They're averaging 48.8 points a game, throwing for 309.4, running for 210.6. That's crazy stats there, especially in the Big Ten. And they're only giving up 13 points a game, a top 15 defense. For Northwestern, they cannot score, but they do have a pretty good defense as well. They're only they're only averaging 17.3 points a game, but they're giving up 15.8. Their defense will probably make this game close for the first one or two quarters, but look for Indiana's balance offense to make the difference second half. I have them pulling this one out, 30 to 16. So that would be a push right now. The spread moved up from a couple of days ago. I do probably have that coming back down by game time, but right now that would be a push and I have them going over. The next game, our new number one team at 4.15 p.m. on the SEC Network. Number one, Alabama 4-0. They'll be playing 2-2 two two Vanderbilt. Right now, the Crimson Tide have a 92.2% chance to win this game. 23-point favorites. Over-under is 55 and a half. This is a pretty interesting game. The reason that I say that is because Alabama is now the new number one team. How do they respond to that? Do they come out after an emotional win and lay an egg? I'm not saying they're going to lose this game. I'm just saying, do they not cover the spread? So maybe win this one like a 30 to 14 game, and they don't fully live up to the luster of being number one. Nick Saban has retired, but not much has really changed there. Kalen DeBoer has stepped in perfectly. Right now, the Crimson Tide have the number one overall roster, according to ESPN, and they're very well balanced. They're averaging 47 points a game, 278 through the air, 222 on the ground. They have Milrow, who is the Heisman front runner right now. They have Williams. They're only giving up 15 points a game. Vandy's had a good season so far. They're averaging 37. They're only giving up 23.3. But we know there's a massive talent gap here. Kalen DeBoer wants to keep grinding. He's an offensive-minded guy. He's not going to let up on the gas. They're going to be going vertical, throwing deep passes. He wants the Heisman. He wants the SEC. He wants the national championship. I have Bama cruising here. Winning this one 43 to 14, covering the spread, and I'm going with the over. The next game, an ACC matchup game. This was supposed to be the ACC game of the year preseason. I told people Florida State was going to take a step back. I didn't think it'd be this big, but we have number 15, Clemson at three and one, who's looking really hot right now on the offensive side. This game's at 7 p.m. on ESPN, playing one and four Florida State. Right now, Clemson has a 80% chance to win this game. 14 and a half point favorites over under here is 47 and a half. Clemson, since they got curb stopped by the Georgia Bulldogs, they've just been grinding on offense, throwing, running the ball. Klubnik has looked really good the last three, four weeks. And Moffa's done well. They're averaging 42 points a game, 
throwing for 284, running for 180. They're giving up 25.8 points a game, but the defense is a lot better than that. That number will continue to come down throughout the season. They have the number nine overall roster, according to ESPN. The offense looks a lot better in year two under Riley. Dabo's really happy that they've turned the season around. They want to beat Florida State really bad, make their point known. They want to compete for Miami for the ACC. Florida State, Mike Norvell, DJU, what an awful team this is. They've really fallen off the rails this season. They're averaging 15.2. They're giving up 24.6. Their strength was supposed to be their D-line, and they are getting gash on the ground for 166 per game. I have Clemson continuing that here, beating Florida State 33-16, to covering the spread. I'm going with the over. The next matchup at 7 p.m. on Fox Sports 2, 1 and 3, Utah State. They'll be playing number 21, Boise State, 3 and 1. Welcome to the top 25, Boise. I've been saying that they should have been ranked top 25 since the preseason. Right now, Boise has a 96.5% chance to win this game. They're massive favorites here. They're 27-point favorites. The over-under 66 and a half. There's going to be some points scored in this game. When you're looking at these two squads, Utah State, they average 21.5. They give up 36.3 points a game. That is awful. They give up 200 yards on the ground. That does not fare well versus Boise State. Boise averages 47.8 points a game. They give up 30. They don't like to play defense, but boy, can they run the ball. They throw for 223. They're running for 303 yards a game. And Utah State gives up 200 per game just on the average weekend. They haven't faced a running back like Janty yet. He's the best running back in the nation right now. He's running all over people. He has 13 rushing touchdowns, 900 yards through their first four games. Just for the regular season, he's on pace for 39 touchdowns, 2,700 yards. I'm not saying that that he's going to get that, but that's what he's on pace for right now. And he's not showing any signs of stepping down. He breaks tackles. He has top end speed. He can do it all. He can catch the ball. Boise he's too talented. This guy could find himself in New York for the Heisman if he keeps this up. Boise wants to take that group of five. They want to make that final 12 for the playoff. I have Boise continuing to roll here, especially on the ground, winning this one 47 to 17, covering that massive spread. But I'm still going under here just because I don't think Utah State can score that many points. Our next matchup back to SEC play, 7.30 p.m. on ABC. Number four, Tennessee Volunteers undefeated 4-0 playing three and two Arkansas Razorbacks. Right now, Tennessee, is they're on the road, they have an 82.1% chance to win this game. 13-point favorites. The over under here is 58 and a half. This is two teams that can score just because Tennessee has played well. Do not sleep on the Arkansas Razorbacks here. Tennessee, the best offense in the nation. They're averaging 54 points a game. Yes, they haven't really played a great team yet. They did beat the Sooners. That's a great win, but the Sooners are kind of limping right now. But they're averaging 54 game props to Josh Heupel. They have Samson, Squirrel White, Nico. They're throwing for 280 a game. They're running for 290, the best offense in all football. They're only giving up seven points a game. Crazy. A top five offense, a top five defense. They can beat you running the ball, throwing the ball. They can beat you on defense, and they're also top 10 in sacks. Great team here for Arkansas. Pittman has answered the call. This team is a lot better than previous seasons. Bobby Petrino, we know he can call offense. They have Daniels averaging 35.8 points a game. They're throwing for 300.4. They're running for 212. They're giving up 20.2. That's why I said do not sleep on the Razorbacks. They can easily make a game of this, especially if Tennessee doesn't take this game serious. We'll see how Josh Heupel has this team prepared. They could sleepwalk in here, barely win the game. Watch that for the spread, but I have Tennessee winning this one 34 to 20 covering the spread, but I'm going with the under. This next matchup's big 10 game at 7.30 p.m. on NBC. Number 10, Michigan, 4-1, and one, playing 3-2, and two, Washington Huskies. Washington with a 58% chance to win this game. The over-under here is 41 and a half. Just like Missouri, Michigan to me has no business being in the top 10. That's not a knock on the team. This is not the team from last season. One, they don't have Harbaugh. They don't have J.J. McCarthy. They have Warren. They have Orgy. Neither of them are good quarterbacks in any way whatsoever. They cannot throw the ball accurately past five yards. If you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterbacks. Neither of them are any good. Michigan, yes, they beat the Trojans with like 32 passing yards. If you can't throw for 50 yards a game, you have no business being in the top 10. That's fine that you beat the Trojans. That's not going to work versus the Ducks. 
Penn State, Buckeyes, all these top 10 teams would beat Michigan. They shouldn't be there, but they're still a very good team, especially on defense. They're averaging 24.8 points a game. They're giving up 21.4. But we know they're extremely difficult at the line of scrimmage. They play really tough defense. Washington is one of these teams that could potentially upset Michigan. I would not be surprised at all. This this is going to be a pretty tough game, and this is going to be a close game. Right now, Washington, they average 25.2. They're throwing for 307. They're running for 173, but their defense is only giving up 12.4. That's where they have a chance in the game. They have fish. They have Will Rogers at the quarterback position. He's played tough defenses before. He can throw all over people. I think this game goes down to the very end of the fourth quarter. I have Michigan winning this one, 22-17. The uh, spread being covered, I'm going with the under. I think Washington was a favorite a couple days ago, but that spread has moved. Michigan pulls it out. Very close, so that would actually, yeah, so they would be covering the spread, but this is one of those ones that you got to watch. I got a weird feeling about this game, so I would keep your eye on it. And then the next game of Big Ten, 7.30 p.m. on the Big Ten Network, number 11, USC Trojans, 3-1, and one, coming off of that win versus Wisconsin. They'll be playing 2-3 and three Minnesota. Right now, the Trojans have a 71.5% chance to win this game. The over-under here is 51 and a half. The Trojans are the favorite. They are eight-point favorites. The over-under is 51 and a half. But Minnesota plays defense. Whenever you play defense, you always have a shot. They're a very physical team under P.J. Fleck. But we know that USC, they have the best offensive mind in all of college football. They have Lincoln Riley. They have Miller Moss. They have Marks at running back. Lane, a, an extremely talented deep wide receiver core. And DeAnton Lynn has completely revamped that defense. They are physical they can tackle. They're fast. USC, they average 34.3. They throw for 325.5. They run for 143.8. They're only giving up 17 a game. Minnesota, they average 26 points a game. Solid defense. A top 20 defense only giving up 15.4. That's going to keep them in this game just like Wisconsin was in the game at halftime. Miller Moss makes throws third quarter. That's what gets them the lead. And then they run out the clock the fourth quarter. I have the Trojans winning this one 32-21, covering the spread. But I'm just barely going with that under. Keep your eye on that because that could move. And the final game we're looking at is a Big 12 one at 7.30 p.m. on Fox. Two and three Baylor back-to-back tough losses. How do they respond? They had two games really close. They lost them both. Dave Aranda's feeling the heat. He's on the hot seat right now. If they don't get a bowl game, if they don't win seven games this season, he's probably getting fired. He's not won enough games for being in a talent-rich state like Texas. They'll be playing number 16, Iowa State, 4-0. Iowa State, a 76.5% chance to win this game. They are 12-point favorites. The over-under is 44.5. Baylor, they don't have a bad squad. They've been competitive in their games. They've made a run second half. They're averaging 29.4. They're giving up 20.2. They have not been able to close out these close games. That's their Achilles heel right now. For Iowa State, we know Matt Campbell always has a physical, disciplined team, especially at the line of scrimmage. They pay Big Ten football in the Big 12. They average 28.3. Beck having a great season. They're throwing for 242. They're running for 163. They're only giving up 7.3 points a game. That defense is aggressive. They're going to get after it. I have Iowa State winning this one 28-17. I do not have them covering the spread, but I will be going with the over. So that's my breakdown. That's our best bets for week six of the 2024 college football season. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. If you have any comments on these games or any other ones, drop them below and I will respond. Thank you.